I was on the street. I had nothing to do. And I, I, uh, I called my brother and I said, uh, you know, you read five books a week. You're a big science fiction fan. What's hot right now? What, what don't I know about? Uh, the internet isn't around. You can't Google something. And I have no relationships to book publishers who have galleys. He says, you know, everybody's on fire about this Douglas Adams Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. I said, really? Tell me more. And so he told me all the things that people liked and, and all this and that. And so uh, I, I called uh, the publisher. I think it was Doubleday. I'm not sure. And I found out that he was represented by Irene Webb at the William Morris Agency. And I said to Irene, uh, I would really like to produce Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Said, Who are you? You haven't even produced a movie yet. This is before I made Angel. And I said, well, I'm, I'm going to be producing, and, and I want to do this, and I think I know how to do it. She goes, how could you possibly do it? I said, well, I heard there's this guy named Ted Fields, uh, who's inherited a lot of money from Marshall Fields, and a, a very close friend of mine, Rob Keneally, knows him. So I'm going to reach out to Rob Keneally and see if he'll put up all the money. She goes, well, then get the money first, then come back and make us an offer. And in the meantime, coincidentally, Douglas Adams has come to the United States, and he's going to spend the month of August at a friend's house in Malibu writing whatever he's writing at the time. So I reach out to Rob Keneally, and now we have a meeting at Ted Field's office on Wilshire Boulevard. And I knew that I was in the right place because as we were going up the elevators and in, we had to go by armed security guards, and I saw all of the videotaping cameras, and this guy's got massive security, so he's, he's making a point to protect his life because <laughs> that's all they're guarding is him. There's nothing else. They're not trying to steal anything. They're just in case somebody's going to kidnap him or something. He's an heir to Marshall Fields estate. He's got an awful lot of money. So uh, Rob and I make the pitch, and he thinks it's a grand idea. And he's willing to front immediately $100,000 to go forward. And if I can get a distributor to come into play, how much money do I need? And I didn't even know what a big, big budget was. And so I just, out of my ass, pulled the number $10 million. He said, well, get me some distribution, and, and I'll put up the $10 million. I'll give you 100000 now, and I'll put up the $10 million, but you got to have distribution. So, you know, I was captain budget. I, I was doing the budgets for everybody. I immediately called John Daly, who's the king of foreign sales. And so I said, uh, I just had a meeting with Ted Fields. He goes, I'm in. Because <laughs> John chases money. That's what he does for a living. So once he found out I'm with one of the richest guys in, in the United States, he'll figure out a way to make the deal work. So I told him the few pieces I had. He talked about how he had good relationships with Orion because of Terminator, and he could probably make him take it on a put, and selling the foreign would be pretty easy. We'd probably have to put a couple names in it, and why not? Everything makes sense. So I'm spending the next three weeks with Douglas Adams in good faith thinking that the attorneys are closing the deal, that $100,000 is about to change hands, and that I'm about to make my first movie, and it's going to be a $10 million science fiction picture. And Douglas has been doing his own work. He's met the inventors of the Cray computer, and that was the first really big computer, and they used it on the last Starfighter. And I go in, and the, the, the room I go into is as big as the last apartment I lived in. I, this is a huge computer, and as I sit here today, the, the Samsung smartphone or the iPhone from Apple are twice as powerful as the computer that I'm in with the room. And he's met the... the, the the key engineer programmer uh, for the company who principally works in San Francisco like this. He lives in Bel Air. In the morning, he drives to the airport in Santa Monica. A Learjet flies him to Palo Alto. He works all day, gets back in the jet, flies home, and then is driven back to his house. That's how important he is and how much it means to him to stay with his family and not uproot them. And he's showing me this handheld word processor that's blowing my mind. I don't even know what a word processor is, and his is handheld. And this is what he does all his work on the plane and in the limo, so he doesn't waste a minute of his day. And we're, we're forging out the kind of deal we're going to make, and we, we find out how we can do the, the, the money shot in Hitchhiker's Guide where the, the spaceship is going left to right, and then it sucks itself out and goes right to left. And he's figured out how to do it with a program on the computer, and he's showing us the first temps. And I'm spending my afternoons in Malibu at the beach house with Douglas, and he loves to drink low and brow. And he tells me how he was reading the Sirens of Titan and, and backpacking across Europe, and 
he just passed out in a pasture one night and he woke up the next day with everything in his head, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And, and it, telling me how he thinks Sirens of Titan is one of the finest books ever written and how Vonnegut really fools you. You think you're just meandering and he pulls it all together at the end and I'm listening to all of that. And, and he's telling me how he went to a nudist colony once and everybody's so concerned that you have to put a towel down on the chairs. So when he wrote the book, you know, his tagline, bring a towel, it was serendipitous. It, it was just something he had experienced by being at a nude colony. And I'm um, getting all these fabulous stories and we're well on our way and we're starting to carve out the first act and we're getting a real handle on, on what the film's gonna mean. And then I get a phone call from Irene Webb saying, stop talking to Douglas. We're gonna sell the rights to Ivan Reitman. I said, so you mean instead of actually negotiating in good faith and closing the deal that we agreed on four weeks ago, you've actually been calling every producer in town and saying, going once, going twice, Borchers are going to get it, who's going to step up, who's going to step up, letting me work in good faith with Douglas, let Douglas work in good faith with me for four weeks, and this is where I end up. Lesson learned. That's how life works in Hollywood. And that's how I lost Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy.